praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the hot man a minute. Um, I want to cover this real quick today, guys. Um, there's a lot of talk right now about the rapture. A lot of people are doing videos on the rapture. And um, I often hear these rapture people saying, let's see what the Bible says. So I'm bringing you this quick video. So yes, let, let us see what the Bible says. Because I think the Bible paints a different picture. So <clears throat> I want to show you this. So in Matthew 24, Jesus is talking about the end times, right? And he tells you the list, like how it's going to take place. And notice in 24, 9, it says, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake, right? And many will be offended and will betray one another and they will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Now, what does it say in verse 13? But he who endures till the end shall be saved. Amen. And then he continues to talk about things that are going to take place. And he scroll down here. I think it's verse 29. Yeah, right here. 24, 29. Look what Jesus says. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Notice that's the second time Jesus says that we're going to go through tribulation. Okay. And I'm not saying the rapture isn't real. It is real. It's in, it's in the Bible. And we're going to look at that. But what I'm saying is. This false hope that people are giving, prepare yourself for the worst, guys. Because what are you going to do when the New World Order and the Antichrist comes kicking your door in? Okay, and, you're, and you haven't prepared your heart or anything because you were hoping on a rapture that's not coming till the, the end. <laughs> so, but anyways, let's get back to the Word, okay? Because I don't want any opinions here. I want nothing but the Word of God. So, one of the main scriptures... They'll use, they got a couple of them, rapture, like the pre-tribulation rapture people, is uh, 1 Corinthians 15.50. And I want to look at that. 52, sorry. It's the one that says, in the twinkling of the eye and all that will be changed. Well, let's read the Greek. It says, in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the trumpet will sound for, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. Now, notice this. It says, at the last trumpet. Does anybody mind answering me how many trumpets there are? Oh, there's seven trumpets. So it's not the first trumpet. So if you read Revelation at the end, we got to go through like all the way through <laughs> to the last trumpet. I mean, that doesn't sound like a pre-tribulation rapture to me. But um, let's continue with the scriptures. All right. So. Also, one they, they always love to go to is 2 Thessalonians 2. It says, Now, brethren, concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, gathering together to him, we ask you not to soon be shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as it from us, as though the day had Christ, of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you, okay, by any means, for that day will not come unless... So here we, we need these things to take place. First is a falling away, okay? Unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed. Second, the Antichrist needs to be revealed. The son of perdition who opposes himself and exalts himself above all that is called God and, and that is worship. So that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was with you, when I was still with you, I told you these things. And now... You know what is being, what is restrained, that he may be revealed in his own time. So, third, the restrainer needs to be removed. Okay, and you can continue on reading this in your own time. And I want you to to really pay attention to what Paul's saying there, because none of these people teaching a pre-tribulation rapture touch on any of these three main points: that one, a falling away; two, an antichrist will be revealed; and three. A rest the restrainer will be removed until those three things occur at the last trumpet we're not <laughs> counting on a rapture but let me seal it up with this because when i was asking the lord about these things this is the main one he spoke to me through and i'll end with this guys okay i want to show you the parable jesus talks about about the wheat and the t here it is right here thank you lord now let's let's close with this okay Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, an enemy came and sowed tares amongst the wheat and went his way. 
But when the grain had sprouted and produced the crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. And the servants said to him, Do you want us to go up and gather them up? But he said, No, least while you gather the tares, you also uproot the wheat. Now here's the key, guys. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather the tares and bind them into bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Does he say gather the wheat first? Or does he say gather the tares to burn first? Then gather the wheat into the barn. So guys, Jesus said, as we just read in Matthew 24, He who endures till the end shall be saved. Prepare your hearts, prepare your minds. Don't listen to all these people on YouTube trying to sell you a lie. Okay, love the truth. I mean, yes, the rapture is real and pray that you get raptured. And I pray I'm wrong, okay? But let's prepare for the worst here, guys. Let's get ready, okay? Because the Antichrist is about to rise up. The new world order is locking everything down. Life as you know it will never be the same. And it's time to rise up up and be the son or daughter that God created you to be in this hour. I love you and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon you in his holy name. Amen.